modern uh, discussions of eschatology, it seems to me that one person who's missing is, at least often missing, is Thomas Aquinas. And I've pondered recently why that is, since Thomas features fairly prominently in a lot of theological discussions in, in many areas today, but not in eschatology. So it occurred to me that there's a couple of reasons for this. I think certainly since the early 20th century, discussions of eschatology have been dominated by notions of Jesus' proclamation of the kingdom of God and the significance of that for theology. And Thomas, like most medievals, simply doesn't talk in terms of the kingdom of God. Um, Thomas's preferred term, which he gets from Augustine, is the patria, the homeland. And I think that's a somewhat different image of what we're talking about in eschatology. So I think that a certain amount of translation would need to be made between Thomas's discussion of the patria and modern notions of the kingdom of God. That being said, Thomas has very interesting things to say about the patria. Um, and in particular about the status of human beings as viators or, or well, uh, way, wayfarers on their journey to their homeland. Um, I think another reason why Thomas doesn't feature much in contemporary discussions of eschatology is that so much of what he has to say specifically about eschatology is really tied to an outdated cosmology. Um, so, for example, when Aquinas discusses the resurrection of the body, he talks about it in terms of our bodies uh, existing not on the surface of the earth, but up in the Empyrean heavens. Well, we no longer believe in an Empyrean heaven, so it makes discussions uh, that we find in the Summa concerning the fate of human beings and the resurrection of the body somewhat difficult to appreciate. Um, likewise, his notion of bodies being composed out of four elements and the way in which those elements get reconfigured eschatologically uh, simply are hard for modern people to take seriously. Um, I do think that there are a couple of fundamental principles that Thomas uses in his eschatological discussions that are still relevant. Um, specifically, his, the well-known principle that grace perfects and does not destroy nature, um, and also the principle that, as he puts it in his commentary on 1 Corinthians, that my soul is not me, that human beings are a composite of soul and body, and that any eschatology, any Christian eschatology, is going to have to take that very seriously. So if you take these two principles and put them together, we can see Thomas in his 13th century context trying to work out what it means to think about human destiny, keeping in mind that that destiny has to be a perfection of our nature, and that our nature is not simply a spiritual nature, but also a bodily nature, a composite nature. And I think within his 13th century context, Thomas does a fairly good job of holding to these two principles in thinking eschatologically. Now, we're in a very different context, and so we would certainly work this out quite differently than he would, but I think the two fundamental principles still remain uh, relevant and even helpful in thinking about eschatology.